Hey, my name's Andrew Lear from BFit Training and BFit Training Physiotherapy. I'm here with Josh Gibson, played for North Melbourne in 2006 and went on to win three premierships with the Hawthorne Football Club, including two best and fairest, if I'm not correct. That is correct, mate. So we're here to talk about recovery, running and mindset. Um, so Josh, through his years as an AFL player, you've played plenty of uh, football, plenty of miles in the leagues. What did you do for your recovery? Uh, yeah, look, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Um, AFL very different, you know, a lot of stop start. Um, so our recoveries were, were really um, varied. So after a game, um, probably changed over the years. Towards the end of my career, we really focused on smashing the recovery out straight after a game. So um, that would involve we're going hire a pool facility and we'd have a rotation. So there'd be swimming into bike recovery, into massage, stretching, um, and that was straight after. Uh, myself, I was, uh, I lived near the beach, or well, if you can call it a yeah. beach in Melbourne, I live, near the, I live near the bay, yeah. <laughs> or the pond, and um, so I used to love getting down every every Wednesday, which was uh, a big part of my recovery, um, so in the cold water, into the steam room, repeat efforts, um, heaps of physio, yep. Uh, there's, so, there's so many things and it would just vary week to week depending on how the body was and how you pulled up from the game. And, and now with your training here, you're training a few places, still continuing a heavy training load. Are you carrying over those same principles you learn in AFL um, and now you live around Bondi? You're still doing all that sort of stuff in your recovery? Yeah, I love getting in the water here. Um, I will admit though that probably when you, when you finish being a, uh, a professional athlete, you you think, oh, maybe I don't need to put the same amount of effort <coughs> into your recovery, but uh, when you break it down, you're training the same amount. Probably not, don't have the game intensity, but my body's still taking a huge load during the week, so recovery is uh, is so important. I think that's probably where the general public and the person who's not a professional athlete thinks they don't need to go, because yeah. it's like, oh, you know, that's, that's a high-end sport, but your body still, as I said, is is taking on an extreme load and um, it's something I probably forgot about when I just came out of football like a little bit more uh, relaxation time yeah. but yeah I certainly I quickly found out that my body was getting sore so yeah physio I still see my Cairo um, look for me it's a lot of um, I like active recovery so even just walking the dog just get actively moving things like that and, and water base for sure okay. um, when you talk about active recovery how often would you do that a week uh, well, every morning I, I like to train at sort of six o'clock, uh, whatever time is in the morning, and then straight after that I go home and I go for an hour walk, which is just, it's just a leisurely pace. Yeah. Um, I find it just a nice cool down process. Um, so I know no, probably not everyone can <laughs> no, not everyone has the <laughs> go to the gym but... and go for an hour walk. Yeah, I'm lucky I'm my own boss, but yeah, yeah you know, I, I, I really need to walk every day. My body is that is sore from playing um, AFL. Yeah, like there's, there's plenty of wear and tear, so yeah. um, definitely my knees get a bit stiff, so <laughs> they need to be cooled down uh, for a nice walk. But yeah, do that and then try and in the afternoon, so I'm lucky I'm living across from the water jump in and the temperature is pretty good here compared to Melbourne. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> um, talking about pretty broken, you suffered a pretty bad hamstring injury. Was it 2013 or 2014? Uh, no. The hamstring was, the hamstring, I think that was 2010. Actually. 2010, okay. 2010. And then, so you went on to be one of the main elements of that back line that was so formidable for Hawthorne. How did you get back from that hamstring injury and, and did you ever find or did you ever worry that you were going to do it again? Uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting that one. Um, I'd torn a couple of hamstrings before, but when I did that one, I knew that something was pretty serious. And uh, it's a funny story that week, Monday, I went to see the surgeon. I just moved to Hawthorne, so 2010 was my first year there, and um, I was still pretty close with my North Melbourne doctors. Yep. And it was the argument that Hawthorne guys were saying surgery on the tendon. And speaking of my North doctors, they were saying I shouldn't have surgery. So I was a bit like, oh, do I trust this new group? Um, but then Nick Rewald, who played for St Kilda, actually did the same thing on that weekend. And so I went in to see the surgeon, he was like, um, your pictures are identical, but I just obviously different names. Yeah. And so I went down the surgery track, so Nick went first on the Monday, he practiced on him, and then did the good job on me on the Tuesday. Yeah. But uh, a little rehab for that was, was tough. Nick and I really worked together, and we created a really solid bond out of it, but it was a lot different. It was hyperbaric chambers, so I was in... Um, 
you know, like the single unit hyperbaric chamber, like a little go-kart for uh, a few hours a day, which was full on. Um, a lot of, we've got like a thing called a thousand stairs, which is, you know, it's a stair climb, sort of bushwalk type of thing in Melbourne. Yep. So I'd be doing that every day, just leaving the club, doing that to work up strength. Um, and then really once I got through all that, it was like a 14 week process. and. Um, once I was playing again, we just took a lot of things out of my program, so there was no like RDLs. Yeah. Um, I'd never do explosive hill runs, so if we were doing hill runs, I'd sort of just get to walk up hills, so it wasn't a bad injury. Um, but uh, but you, just, you just learn to manage, manage your program, and then obviously I had a lot of um, TheraBand yeah. um, resistance work, which I just continued on for the next seven years of my career, eight years of my career. So it was a big process. And, and I suppose going for the message for anyone who's not a professional athlete, is that you do have to take certain things out of your program. So for you, you took out RDLs. I know you're doing them now, yeah. but for years they were out. Yeah, look, they've been out for years and years. And um, it's also a bit of a, like the hamstring is, it, uh, at the start you're obviously nervous about what's gonna happen, but it's probably stronger than my other one now. Yeah. And um, you know, like I'm not, I'm not going at that high intensity dynamic movements anymore. So, um, putting it under a little bit of strain during the week in an RDL or a squat um, is fine now. Yeah. Before, if I was doing that stuff during the week and then trying to be explosive on weekends, you open yourself up to being yeah. more, um, more sustainable to getting injury, an injury. Whereas now, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not that explosive anymore. So I can, I can pump out a few RDLs. Oh, I've, I've seen you do some box jumps <laughs> and some weights. You're not too bad.